Hodson and Carl Westby. We're both with the 4 or 5 program and we very much appreciate this opportunity to come and speak with you all. Um, our director, Kim Henry, might come in towards the end. I had a other meeting, but we're hoping to see him come in as well. So um, we'll get started. So um, we like to remind folks that when we started that vision or that master plan view for 4 or 5, um, that was a kind of combination of multiple agencies up and down the corridor, uh, both at the local, state, and federal level. Also, it's a multimodal um, plan that looks at um, providing us um, balance of that congestion on the east side. We got adoption of that plan in 2002, and when we started out, we were really looking at choke points and how we could help in those areas, and then moving on to that reliability for HOV and transit. And that's uh, through that managed lane. And also, um, with our upcoming project, we are also coordinating very closely with Sound Transit because that project will bring bus rapid transit to the 405 system. Um, in 2010, the Executive Advisory Group for 405 um, adopted an implementation, implementation plan for a 40 mile managed system. And so that's the connection from 167th of Pierce County line to along 405 up to Linwood. And as we looked at bringing that reliability back to HOV and transit, um, we've already started to um, bring in some of those managed lanes. So folks are probably very aware of the fact that we have express toll lanes up in the northern end, so Bellevue to Linwood. Those came on board in September of 2015. We also extended the SR-167 hot lanes about eight miles in the southbound direction, and those also those came online in December of 2016. And so where we are at today is currently have a project down in 167 Interchange, and that's called our Direct Connector Project. Um, that project is the ability for the 405 HOV system to directly connect to the SR-167 hotline system, and that's in both directions. Um, and then we're also going to talk some about our upcoming project, which is the Renton to Bellevue project, and that's the EA that uh, you all are interested in hearing about. And then um, at the bottom there, we also have a project in the north end. So um, we were given money by the legislature to look at that north end, particularly State Route 522 to State Route 527. Uh, we have funding for PE and right away, but it is not funded for construction. So as we look at the Renton to Bellevue project, so that was funded through Connecting Washington Funds um, in 2015. That project um, will extend the express toll lanes in Bellevue down to 167 in Renton. Um, the purple up there shows you where those express toll lanes will be. We also are adding some general capacity improvements, and those are shown in green. So those uh, pieces are from I-90 to about 112th in the southbound direction. And then again at 44th in Renton to 30th, that hill that climbs up there at Kennedale gives us an extra lane in there to help with, it's not necessarily an official truck climbing lane, but that's the purpose of it there, to help with that um, congestion point as well. We have lots of improvements at interchange. The most significant interchange improvement will be at Northeast 44th Street, where we will be partnering with Sound Transit to build an inline station there for the bus rapid transit system. We also have direct access there at that interchange. So the look and feel of that area is going to be significantly different at the end of this project. Um, we're also closely working with the East Side Rail Corridor Trail System. We will be building part of their regional trail system for this project. And also working with Mountains to Sounds in the Factoria area with their project. So lots of coordination to um, facilitate that multimodal purpose for this project. When we talk about the Renton to Bellevue project, we actually have two environmental assessments. So we have one that's called our Downtown Bellevue Assessment, and that's just north of I-90 up to about 520. Um, that's someone that's currently out there for public um, viewing, and that um, the cutoff date for the comments on that is May 2nd. We had a public hearing last week um, at the City of Bellevue. And then um, that second piece is going to be in the light green shown on the map there. That's the, um, the bigger portion of the project. That EA is called our Tuckwilla to um, I-90, and that will be out in about mid-June, first part of July for the public hearing as well. Um, there's several topics that we uh, evaluate through that environmental assessment process. Those are listed up there. We're going to touch on a few of those today. 
um, to look at that scope that we're doing just for that downtown Bellevue EA. Um, we will be um, expanding the off ramp, so northbound 405 to 520 is currently a two lane off ramp. We will be adding a third lane there to help with that congestion point. Um, Main Street Bridge gets be, will be rebuilt, and then um, we are doing some other bridges through the area. Um, near Southeast 8th, we'll be doing some widening, and then there's some bridge work to accommodate the future trail in that Wilburton area. So we'll be restoring that trail path. Um, when we took out the Wilburton trestle, we uh, had that in the future that we would restore that. So that'll be part of this project. I'm going to turn over to Carl for a little bit. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about traffic operations, um, kind of before and after the project is complete. So just so we're clear, we have these two environmental documents, but this will be constructed as a single project under a single contract. Um, just environmentally, they got split up for some uh, legacy reasons of some previous environmental documents. But what we see here is some heat maps. For those of you that aren't familiar, I'll give you a quick example. Uh, this is looking southbound right here in the general purpose lanes on the far left. Um, this is in the morning, and you can see just different locations on the corridor starting at 520, I-90, 44, and all the way down at I-5. Um, starting at 5 a.m. and then going horizontally over to about 11.30, or excuse me, 10.30 a.m. So we can see extent of the corridor, we can see duration of congestion, and then in color, the intensity of congestion that's out there. Um, kind of going left to right, without the project southbound in the morning, um, there's a little bit of congestion in the general purpose lanes in this area, but it's kind of the off-peak direction. It's not where the majority of our congestion is. Similarly, in the HOV lane southbound in the morning, um, a little bit of congestion. Northbound, clearly a different picture. Um, starting at I-5, we have congestion all the way through the Renton area um, into North Renton and South Bellevue. The HOV lanes are pretty much full and really struggling up to about 44th Street. There's a bottleneck there that essentially meters things and things free up a little bit from there. And then there, they have some congestion in downtown Bellevue. General purpose lanes follow a similar pattern, although the level of congestion is much worse. That's the conditions without the project. Um, again, this is year 2025, morning, morning peak. If we look over here and see with the project, how do things change? In the southbound direction, where we didn't have a whole lot of congestion, things clean up quite nicely. Big improvement in both the general purpose and what are now the express toll lanes. Northbound in the morning, we go from this very congested HOV lane to express toll lanes that are largely free flow. A little bit of slowdowns around a couple of the access points there, but a pretty dramatic improvement. The general purpose lanes as well um, see a market improvement from the before to the after conditions. I will note that a lot of this traffic and everything stuck in the Renton South Bellevue area gets freed up. So that big red and black blob goes away. Um, some of those people do move downstream and into Bellevue, so we get a little bit of uh, congestion in and around I-90 as a lot of that traffic is freed up, and we still have some residual congestion in the general purpose lanes in Bellevue. Lisa talked a lot about the master plan. This is the before and after with this funded project um, in and around I-90 in downtown Bellevue, as I'm sure you were aware. There's other improvements. Um, that are planned. We have a priority list, which includes some high priority projects in those areas, just dependent on future funding. But that's the before and after in the morning. Go to the next slide. Um, we can see what's going on in the afternoon. Almost a mirror image. General purpose and HOV lanes trying to go southbound that commute down towards Renton and Tukwila. Huge bottlenecks in and around Coal Creek, 44th, and some other spots. Um, 
with the project, that gets cleaned up considerably, a lot of capacity. Um, the continuous express <coughs> pole lanes are a big part of that. The new um, lane from essentially the I-90 southbound on-ramp all the way through the Cold Creek nightmare, um, all the way down to 112th, improves that, that operation quite a bit. At some point, the lanes do end, and uh, down in the Tukwila area, all of this congestion has made it through the corridor. Some of it's made it down onto 167. We do still have some bottlenecks um, down there at I-5. Again, we have master plan solutions and connections there. This is just where we're at from a funding standpoint. <coughs> um, a concern because the last time we got a presentation regarding the express toll lanes up here, the north side, yep. they had only met one of the two criteria required by the RCW. Yep. And so I would have expected that the next presentation would show us the, the comparison between after with the HOV lane that is now currently on the freeway yes. and then also with the express toll lane so that we can compare which of the two solutions we want. We already know it's bad versus better. Yes, but we don't right. have what we should have versus what we're being offered compared, you know, based on the last studies that we have. So do you have that coming up in the presentation? We don't. We looked at, um, so a little bit of history um, through our executive advisory committee um, and working with the legislature, we, the department received very clear direction. This is the project they have prioritized and intend us to build, to build the express toll lanes and some of these other master plan elements. Oh, so um, the legislature has changed the RCW to allow the, just one criteria? Um, they not a legislator. They haven't acted on that, but they've given us very clear direction to move forward with the express toll lanes. Um, on that particular issue, if you think about the north end of the corridor, um, there's this 45 miles an hour, 90% of the time metric that um, was uh, the metric that's in question. We see in our two lane section, we have no problem meeting that metric. We've met that metric. It's not been an issue at all. Um, it's where we have a single express toll lane that we have a performance issue. All of this project has dual express toll lanes. So we're anticipating just like the two lane section in the north end, the two lane section in the south end should be able to perform and meet that. So then we'll be able to compare that to with just regular HOE leads. Yeah, so the comparison we have is no, condition that exists. Oh, but after we add the lanes, we won't be able to see what it would be like with if we just kept one HOV lane, like the original master plan. Yeah. Um, I'm confused. Because you said okay. the original master plan. You know what, Eli? Let's, yeah. let's move on. Let's let our presenters finish their <laughs> presentation, okay, and then let's go talk about, well, then we'll do questions after. If that's yeah, okay. that works. So, yeah, um, let's let Carl yeah. and Lisa finish up. So um, that's what's going on in the southbound direction in the future in the afternoon. Um, in the northbound direction, uh, for any of you that have tried to get from I-5 northbound, just heading towards Bellevue in the afternoon, there's a lot of congestion, especially approaching uh, Maple Valley Highway 169 area. That will only get worse in the future if we do nothing. Um, so we see some pretty big improvements, even though that is the off-peak direction, uh, no build to build in the afternoons there. So. Um, We'll probably just go through the rest of the presentation and then happy to answer traffic questions. Okay. Great. So um, traffic's a big part of that, but we also uh, look at some other pieces. And so we picked a few of those larger items that tend to have the uh, larger discipline reports. So stormwater and water quality is always a thing that we're looking at. So what's the runoff look like when we build these roads and the treatment of those? Um, also the ecosystem, so we do have um, about a half acre of impact to wetlands in which we're mitigating. Um, Kelsey Creek is an area that we're mitigating at, Mercer Slough, and then some enhancements within the right way, and then a little bit off site as well. Um, all vegetation that's impacted gets um, replaced and trees have a tree replacement policy, so uh, addressing those things through the project. Um, air quality is another one that um, folks ask about and so in general with the technology that's out there and what we're seeing with cars uh, by the year 2025 when we open that air quality is really going to be significantly better than when we were there before. Um, reduced idling does play a small part in it but it's really that uh, the technology that's playing the role in that reduced um, air quality 
quality out there, or better air quality is the better way to say that, sorry. Uh, and then we look at noise too, and in this general vicinity for this piece of the um, project, which is just the downtown Bellevue area, we're not really seeing any difference in the noise between pre-project and post-project. Um, the other thing that we like to do, not only just uh, solicit feedback through the EA system, or the environmental assessment is we've also um, had some letters come through the legislature of support for express toll lanes, not just in the north end, but also to extend them down in the south end. And then also um, we like to know what our users think as well. And so we have done several surveys with folks, uh, businesses, um, folks that use the system. And so we're starting to see a trend where folks like them. We're kind of in that 60% realm of positiveness, whereas when we first opened up, not so positive. And then um, we have a schedule, so um, that top three bars, if there really represents the, the legislative line item for rent and the value. So we talked about the direct connector project down at 167. The second one out the gate is the rent to Bellevue project. That's the big one. And then there is a third follow-on contract, and that's about um, extension of Southeast 6th Street, Northeast 6th Street, excuse me. Um, and then we have some projects in the Kirkland area at 132nd. We're also partnering with Sound Transit for uh, 85th Interchange will be direct access in line station there as well. Um, we do have funding for PE and right away for 520 and Northeast 124th Interchange, but not for the construction of it. And that about talks about what's on this slide. Two things to note is that through that multimodal partnership that we have on this contract, we have a commitment with uh, the regional trail system to be done with that portion of the work by the end of 2020 so we can align with what King County is currently doing out there. And also with our Sound Transit partner to make sure that we have the express toll lanes available for them when their bus rapid transit is ready to come online. 